Go, go. That's it, Roach. Never oh. 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 This is oh. This is oh. 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 But you always trumps villainy. Mr. Raven's at his side. Right. You'll miss the golden. Need to speak to the Duchess urgently. All right, you scamps. Story's done. Go find your parents. But the Pomerin. What about the story of Ritik and the dragon? A tale's for another time. But take a good look at the man who stands before you now. This is Geralt of Rivia. The Master Witcher who lent his valiant hand to the defeat of the giant Goliath. Master Witcher, is it true virtue always trumps villainy? Not always. Could go either way. Sometimes virtue wins, sometimes villainy gets the upper hand. Still worth being good. But why? If it doesn't mean you'll win. Palmer and Story, think back. A decent man attracts other good folk, makes friends he can count on. A rogue? Well, he can only count on other rogues. And who would you rather have for a friend? A man of virtue? I must agree. Now, that will do for questions. Go find your parents. Her enlightened highness has doubtless arrived at the tourney grounds to watch the battle in the arena. If we hurry, we'll be in time to speak with her before the spectacle begins. Lead the way. Who's fighting? Elf Guardian gladiators? Close, but not quite. As you will soon see. Someone's gonna fight a Shalemar? Using the elf on its tail to confuse it, slow it down? What I thought is the problem. The beast is a gift from the Emperor, no less. I saw the spectacle of the sword of Yorina and Nunez. There, a knight came into the Shelmar with bells on its tail. Might have gotten lucky. Shelmar might have been lame. Who knows? Only a Witcher has a real chance against a healthy Shelmar. And that's not even every Witcher. Besides which, releasing a monster that dangerous in front of a crowd? Plain irresponsible. Let's go. I dedicate my imminent victory to fair lady Vivian. It's begun. The fight shall have to end first. We must wait. feeling about
about this. Trait. Behold, as the last gasps of life seep from the beast. Master Geralt, do what you must. Finish the deed! It suffered enough. Thank <laughs> you. 
The match last train! The fight is done! Christ be the victors! <laughs> Forgive me. I am not as nimble as in my younger years. You fought bravely. Thanks for your help. Guillaume. The lot came damned close to dying. I'm... fine. Not hurt at all. Vivian? Smile as befits a hero and keep silent. Speech clearly paints you. She approaches. Geralt, we must talk. Vivian, you shall talk later in the medic's tent. Geralt, magnificent, breathtaking. Your grace. We knew that to summon you was a brilliant idea. We are delighted, raffish, to have struck upon it. And I'm truly... Uh, honored. See to our young hero. Hop, hop. For we must make off with Geralt. We should talk. We had been long awaiting your arrival. Had nearly lost hope. Then suddenly, that entrance, so spectacular. Your Grace, my contract. I'd like to discuss it. Naturally. But not here. We shall need Damien. He let the investigation pending your arrival. But whatever could he be? Come, we must find him. Tell us, have you come alone? Or did Viscount Julian accompany you? Wish to see Dandelion, Your Grace? Yes. I mean, no. Ugh. Yes. But solely to tell him we regret. Yes, deeply regret rescinding the death sentence we so justly handed down upon him. If we could turn back time, we would make certain he sat in a tower till he rotted. No, we would ensure he was broken on the wheel, then drawn, hanged, and quartered. Ah, the very man we would entrust with these tasks. Damien de la Tour, captain of my personal guard. Your Grace, Witcher. Greetings. Sorry to have to tell you, but the guardsmen handling the last victim's body... I know already. The creature in the cellar of Corvo Bianco. Was it the beast? No. A bruxa. A kind of vampire. Not the beast, but tied to it in some way. You know this how? Through careful analysis of the evidence, both on the riverbank and at Corvo Bianco. Do you mean to insinuate the investigation thus far has been sloppy? Geralt insinuates nothing of the sort. We must listen to him attentively. I examined the body of the beast's last victim. Might have found something. Need to analyze it. A quiet place, that's what I could use most right now. And maybe the help of an alchemist or a mage. Also like to hear all you know about the previous victims. Take it Sir De La Tour is my man for that. Firstly, call me Damien, please. Secondly, you should know I spoke against summoning you here. I've heard much about you. You bring trouble, or thus far have, always. And we've enough trouble as it is. Yet we are capable of defeating the beast on our own, without an outsider's help. I've no doubt about it. Damien, we settled the matter of the Witcher's employ some time past. Definitively. Since you have broached it, nonetheless, let us discuss Geralt's pay. Are the legends true? Do witchers usually demand that which you find at home, yet did not expect? Yes, Your Grace. The Law of Surprise. 
time honored. Hmm. We shall be counted. The surprises we encounter on a daily basis would be of no value to one such as you. What awaits at the palace are edicts to sign and portraits of suitors from far off lands. I fear you would find little use for either. Thus, we've decided you shall receive the deed to a vineyard, Corvo Bianco, and a sum of coin. You will doubtless consider this adequate. Title to the vineyard shall be given to you at once. Surely you'll need lodgings while you hunt. The coin, however, will be yours only once you have slain the beast. Lovely, generous gesture, Your Grace. <sighs> Corvo Bianco. Isn't it the Duchy's temporary morgue? Is it now? The Chancellery has bungled things again, we fear. Not to be left unsupervised for one instant. Yet, in its mood, a morgue should present minimal problems to a witcher. What's more, nothing enhances a wine's reputation better than a grim legend. Thank you, Your Grace. I accept the contract, of course. But as I said before, I'll need some information. How did it start? Who was the first victim? Crispy was the first to die. He was famed once for his many glorious tournament victories. Then he grew old, hung up his sword, and took to winemaking. Crespi was not loved by the wine merchants. He was ruthless in business and thought to cheat many a time. He asked us for a dispensation from all court ceremonies. We did not grant it. We could not. Once you've taken the oath of a knight, you remain a knight till death. How'd he die? Where'd they find the body? Quite unusual, the circumstance. He was at a feast when suddenly one of his fellow feast-goers noticed he was missing. The town watch found him an hour later. On his hands and knees, propped against the town pillory, his sword hanging from his neck. He had died of wounds inflicted with claws, not a weapon. Blows of great force. So he died suddenly, but the body was on its knees, meaning someone posed it. So it seems. Second murder. Tell me what you know. In the city, there are certain nooks. No one reasonable ventures there after dark. Ramon Dulac's corpse was found in one such place. With the first murder, terror gripped the city. Its inhabitants grew wary, kept to safe areas. Consequently, news of the second victim came to us from a group of concerned cut purses. Criminals fear the beast? Telling in a way. Take it you've excluded the possibility that Ramon died at the hands of these bandits. Do you believe me, an amateur? Not hands, but claws killed Ramon Dulac. The wound was deep, clean. His body was found in the gutter, dressed in nightshirt and cap, a pillow placed under his head, and his sword replaced by a bed warmer. Ramon Dulac, a knight who but a dozen years past was an advisor to our father, the Duke. Someone went to a lot of trouble to make him look ridiculous. Maybe revenge was the motive. It's not out of the question. Dulac had shady dealings with the criminal underworld, but no one ever came forth with concrete proof of any misdoings. So, the first two victims were knights, best years behind them. The same could be said of the third. Sir Delacroix was wont to claim that in modern times, knights face new challenges, enterprise being the latest addition to the chivalric virtues. He made a veritable fortune in the grain trade. Palmerin even nicknamed him Sir de la Stinci. Found a coin pouch on his body. Contained florins dating from various times, hailing from different provinces of the Empire. Delacroix loved coin, true, but had no patience for numismatics. Lots of similarities between the victims. All the bodies were found in strange places under extraordinary circumstances. Seems the murderer, whoever or whatever it is, has some meaning to convey. These were honorable men. We are horrified by the disdain, the disrespect with which they were treated. These were knights of Toussaint. Blast it. Might be the point. From what you say, none was a model of virtue. Ever considered that's what the beast's trying to draw attention to? All the murdered men were knights who swore fealty to the five chivalric virtues. And even if Knights the... of Toussaint swear fealty to what virtues, exactly? Honor, 
wisdom, generosity, valor and compassion. Beast seems to be pointing up moral decay, denouncing it. Victims were all humiliated. Might have been murdered to emphasize their lack of specific chivalric virtues. Honor compromised by the pillory. Wisdom by ridicule. Generosity by a coin pouch shoved down a throat. It seems to fit, true, though not perfectly. Can't discount the theory if it's on the lips of everyone in town. Say our reasoning's right. Next murder will be just as showy and denounce the victim's lack of the fourth virtue, valor. We can also assume that victim will be an elder knight. Let's think. At the moment, all the knights are either at the tourney grounds or in the palace gardens. Our annual hare hunts shall begin there shortly. Have you heard of the custom? Milton mentioned something. Seemed excited to prance around in a bunny costume. Not sure why. Hang on. Strange circumstances. A knight advanced in years. The famed cowardice of rabbits. Could it be that simple? Is Milton de Peyrac Peyren the next victim? Milton also knew Delacroix. Told me so down by the river. Damien! To me, something so obvious. De Peyrac Peyren, Crespi, Delacroix, and Delac formed a knightly team. It was years ago, but... They were a team? They were close friends. Tightly knit, and as such, earned the trust of our father, the Duke. We often witnessed him turn to them with delicate matters. Later, their paths diverged. Unlikely to be a coincidence. Beast must know it too. It's a lead, I'm sure. Your Grace, we need to find Milton. Immediately. Rather problematic. You see, the garden entertainments are due to start, and he's disguised as the Hare. Hiding somewhere, waiting for some tipsy courtiers to find him. The hare's hiding place is a carefully guarded secret. We must call off the game, at once. First and foremost, we must remain calm. Damien, order the garden searched immediately, but discreetly. By no means can we disrupt the festivities. Panic will only incite the beast to strike sooner. And you, Witcher, follow me. My gardens, my knight, I shall take the fall. A murder is out of the question. I will not allow it. Not near my palace. Horses? Ready our horses! Your Grace! <gasps> what the hell? Why, I should... Your Highness, I... Mind it doesn't get wrinkled. golden fish and a phoenix egg. With these in hand, they can deduce where the hare, Milton, hides. Meaning we need to find those things too. We've no other option, but time is of the essence, so we shall have to break the rules. That's nice. <laughs> In 
Second port, through here. I shall show you where the hunt plays out. Then we will split up. You will get hold of the unicorn horn and the golden fish. While well, I nab the phoenix egg. That will be quickest. Golden fish. Do I need a rod or a net? Please, Geralt. It's not a real fish. Look there. Towards the water. See the lights? The hunters are trying to hook the fish from boats. You must simply dive in and find it. The unicorn. How do I catch it? It's terribly skittish, true, but I'm sure you will find a way to earn its trust. It turns around over there. Look! The golden fish and the horn both contain things or clues that will help us find Milton. Once you have fish and horn, find me among the other phoenix egg hunters. All clear? Then let's get to it. Fiorano of the 1290. I do encourage you to try it. Your Grace. Keep calm. Start no brawls. I have three doublets, none of which are suitable to show myself in. Look! Oh! Your Highness. Your Grace. Perhaps an apple will work, or some sweets. We would not be in this predicament, dear sister, were you still a virgin. Do you really wish to have this conversation again? Here and now? Hush, or you'll spook the beast. We shall try the sweets. Hey, folks. Gonna have to ruin your fun. Sorry. Who's that? Flagrant cheating is what it is! Sirs, we must teach this scamp some proper sportsmanship. Listen, I didn't break any rules. True, he won fair and square. We were unlucky, that's all. We must try to grab the next clue. Gardens are huge. Be better off on horseback. Unworthy. Entirely inappropriate behavior. A complete collapse of social norms. What the places? 
Did someone just dive in the water? Perhaps that's the way to do it. Sure, if you're a peasant. Hey, wait. Stop. It's important. King Cormorant Sire, accept this offering we bring. Prithee cast upon us your merciful eye and bear before us its secrets. As the moon its heavenly course doth trace, in my domain I await that moment of grace when a soul of good or ill repute brings me a gift, fitting tribute. A key. Why, you bombard stretch? He's ruined the game! Disgraceful. <laughs> and fair. If you please, Your Grace. We do not please. We act out of the highest necessity. All shall be explained later. But it's against the rules. I am the rules. Geralt! At last. Got a key and a clue. And I've another. Show me yours. Who wrote this driver? I begin like a groan, hollowed out with ease, then end like a mouse with a head of hard cheese. is obliged to hide here in the gardens. Look, if we take Rome, hollow it out and fill it with ease, the letters, that is, we get green, then mouse, but starting with what heads heart cheese. Why, it's greenhouse. Hmm, pretty clever, and it sounds right to me. There are several greenhouses in the gardens, but only one with a door that locks, and the key to it looks just like the one we found. Greenhouse is there. Let's go.
I'm here. This belonged to you, maybe? It did, but you may keep it. I've a new one. I do not know you. I've done you no harm. Yet first you butchered a Bruxer who was dear to me. Now you pursue me. Why? You've killed four innocent people, at least. And you? How many innocents have you cut down? I don't kill innocents. Murderers, though, you bet. I'll soon be done. I've but one left. And you, should you not stand down? And once you're done, intend to leave? Go kill somewhere else? No. I intend to live. <sighs> happily ever after. to stay where you were. Regenerate! I know you're in trouble. I can help. I'll help myself! No. He's my friend. Yes, Geralt. It's me. Regis? I... You all right? All is well. All's in order. Wounds such as these heal on vampires in moments. But we've not seen one another in ages, my friend. At least in human terms, that is. How's this even possible? Last I saw you... I was a bubbling, shapeless smear, having been rather spectacularly melted into a column of a certain castle. In somewhat better shape now, as you can see. Hardly peak form, mind you, but were I human, folk would think me a demigod, I dare say. I'm sorry. What happened? It was my fault. Never got a chance to apologize. No need, Geralt. Bygones. I did not have to join you on that expedition. No one twisted my arm. You being here, not some fortunate coincidence, I take it. Your powers of deduction seem to have waned not one bit. I'm happy. I came here for Tetlaf. I fear he's become entangled. Landed himself in serious trouble. So that's his name. He's your friend? You might call it that. Though Detlaf is... How would you humans put it? More bestial than I am. But not to worry. I'm working on him. Haven't exactly done a great job with that. He's killed one night since I got here. At least three others before I arrived. For good reason, I'm sure. Understand. 
Detlaf is not some decadent shit who kills for sport, or to assuage a dryness of throat or a dullness of mood. So in your opinion, what are his reasons? Precisely what I wish to find out. And then I will convince him of the error of his ways. Got a lot of faith in the guy. Despite appearances to the contrary, you two are quite alike. You've both noble hearts, yet you both are wont to perform ignoble deeds. When circumstances force you to, of course. Remember the year 964? <laughs> that was three centuries ago. Blind fear gripped Rivia, Lyria, and Spala. Women and children were dying. Their mutilated, dismembered corpses littered the fields. Brute of Lyria. Read about it. Chewed up almost two hundred, then fell to a common poacher supposedly armed with a dagger blessed by some prophet. It fell to Detlaf, who then found a poacher asleep in the brush near his snares and dropped the fiend's corpse at his feet. And thus, a legend was born. Huh. Vampires rarely help humans. Must have had his own agenda hunting the beast. You err. He slew it for one reason alone. The monster killed a lad who once in the street had offered Detlaf an apple, expecting nothing in return. Terribly noble of him. You do not have a monopoly on altruism, my friend. Vilgefort melted my body. Detlaf found what was left. As per our codex, he had a choice. To leave me where I was, or to care for me and nurture my remains. He chose the latter. Regenerated me at no small expense in his own blood. Do you know what that means to a vampire? The gravity of the endeavor? Probably same thing it means to a human. You owe him your life. Much more than that. The act itself made us blood brethren. A bond so strong humans cannot even imagine. Which is why I know something ill is afoot. Always had an overdeveloped sense of empathy. Each vampire has a unique talent. One they hone over centuries. It's precisely what renders us so difficult to classify. Detlaf's trump card is his herd instinct, his tribal propensity. In point of fact, he prefers the company of lesser vampires and shuns that of humans. If he walks among you, killing egregiously, it can only mean something's upset him immensely. Anything specific? Some set of things that'd be likely to set him off? How should I say this? Detlaf doesn't understand men, their world, its rules, its conventions. He's naive in a sense. He doesn't comprehend your games, knows not what it means to lie, deceive. Huh. Suggesting he's maladjusted, inventing his rage. I'm suggesting maladjustment can at times breed conflict. But is it the case this time? I cannot say, but intend to find out. Gotta find him before something upsets him even more, and all Beauclair is awash with blood. Well, we share a cause then, just like the old days. Not entirely. I mean, when I find him, you know. I know you've a contract on his head. Yet your true task is to stop the beast killing, not necessarily to kill the beast, am I right? All in all, sure. Let us find him. By the time we do, I hope I'll have convinced you Detlaf is no monster. Fine, all right already. But for now, evidence is stacking up against him. Hear that? The posse. Knights must have tracked me here. I prefer they not find me here. I've makeshift quarters at Mela Chaiselong Cemetery. We'll meet there. See you. Witcher, we flew here as fast as our courses would carry us. Yet I fear we're late all the same. Pray, where is the beast? Still investigating. About to inspect this site. Withdraw your men before they trample all over the evidence. Ahem, <clears throat> sirs. We must let the Witcher do his work. Milton's murder cannot go unoffensed.
We must allow the Witcher to ply his trade. 